singing. Perfectly in tune. Like, it must be beautiful. Right? Uh, very cool. Are we waiting for red light? Yeah. Did I know that? I think so. It usually comes on automatically. You may be on. I don't even know it. Four. Which camera is it? It's usually one. Uh, I'll be facing that one. Yeah, that's it. Right. Right. Come on. That's a good idea. Yeah, may I check with them? <coughs> yeah, they came in. Yeah, I didn't bring my moxie today. Oh, let's put that. this <coughs> one. Seriously? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> So wrong. <laughs> like, white Okay, I'll go this one. Oh, yeah. We're past our time. We're past our time. <laughs> Postpone it.
the existing outline as, far, as well as an outbuilding and some gaps. This here is where we would propose to come off to the left hand side. So technically the only section that we're asking for variance is this shaded, funny, long, skinny rectangle on the front side. The deepest section of it is four foot four. The narrow section is nine inches. It's odd shape, but it's about 31 to 32 feet long. I feel that the variance would not create an adverse impact because the way that this particular house is located on Pine Point, because it's neighboring houses, the depth of this structure really does not affect um, anybody's views. And I know the legalities of views down on the point, I understand that, um, but we're always sensitive to that. In this particular case, you know, the, the, the Demkowitz have this entire piece to work with here within the setbacks. It's a long, skinny piece. So obviously, continuing this way more might impact people's views. But coming this way, to be frank, whether it's back here, here, or even another <coughs> six feet forward, does not affect anybody's views. I walk the site very familiar here. Um, although the second floor, the proposed second floor, extends over this area, it's only the only real reason we're doing that is because architecturally speaking, it makes a lot of sense. If, for example, we were to take this garage and push the second floor back, that four foot four, to be compliant with the setback line, um, you know, could it be done structurally? Absolutely. Um, architecturally, I think that, or I'm afraid it would create something that would be odd and can also be quite a bit more complex and expensive to create a roof deck or something over a finished space like that. So what we're proposing is to keep it simple, um, architecturally very clean, and again, hoping that it doesn't impact anyone's views or use of the site in any way. So that's pretty much the points I wanted to make. And Mr. Nishin, that's back. including <laughs> the eaves. That's including the eaves on the eave kind of those Correct. Things. So actually, yeah. most of it is actually Eve, then, that you're asking for. Uh, but we have a big chunk of this. Yep, you're right. My dimensions go to, to, to the, what we call the trip line. Okay. Furthest extent of the roof. Thank you. Um, Mr. Longstaff, anything to add on this? Um, nothing more than what I already had in my staff comments. Um, it does appear to be um, eligible for the limited reduction of yard size. The age of the structure um, meets the standards. Um, it existed before July 3rd, 1991. Um, the request for relief fits the, the front yard setback of, of uh, reduction of no more than 10 feet and side yard of no more than 5 feet. So um, I think they're, they're good to go. Thank you. And. Uh why don't open up the public hearing first? Does anybody wish to speak on this issue? Public speak to be open. And we've gotten no letters or phone calls on this property? We have not. Almost amazing by itself. And so we'll close the public hearing part of uh, the, the meeting and we'll come to the board for our questions, comments. Thoughts? Where is the um, where is the shed currently located? Shed. Right next to the existing cottage, uh, right there. Okay. Technically not attached, but it's, uh, it's really close. Okay. Questions from board members? This seems pretty straightforward. Uh, we have no dunes or, or issues we have to deal with. Uh, that'll all be handled through the permit by rule process. Mr. Richmond, seems like you're pretty straightforward on this, as usual. Um, I, I personally don't have a problem with this appeal. I think it's pretty consistent. Um, the, the amount we're talking about is minimal. I like the fact that you're kind of duplicating. I think that's a nice design. I like that a lot, actually. And I know the property. I've been by it many times. Um, so I, I personally like the the design, I like the setup, it makes sense. 
it's, it's not an abuse of of the board's authority and so I you know I move to approve as requested second that I got a second on that anybody wish to discuss that do we have do we have to any other questions or anything <clears throat> well you know we should why don't we go through those Mr. Schmidt this is so straightforward that I'm actually but we should go through those If we just want to jump right into the existing building, we'll go there right through it. The existing buildings are structures on the lot, which the limited reduction of yard size residential uh, is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, although the lot is a vacant, non conforming lot of record. Yes, the existing structure was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. And the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes, it is. The, the need for this variance is due to the owner's need for an attached garage of a size that is typical of other garages within this district. Due to site constraints and the need to maintain a bedroom on the first floor, we cannot shift the garage further west than we currently have it shown without creating interior spaces that are not usable or enjoyable. And due to the physical features of the lot, and or the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the pro proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with uh, currently applicable yard size requirements? No, it is not. The current structure hugs the western side of the allowable building envelope, <coughs> allowing any expansion to occur only towards the east. Due to the angled setback line on the front of the property and the depth of an average size garage, we find that this is the only practical layout for this expansion. Okay, and the impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion or new building and structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building and structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. No, they will not. Generally speaking, the ex existing cottage is much smaller in scale than other properties in the immediate area. It sits on a rather wide but shallow lot. This design will allow it to better conform to the scale and fabric of the neighborhood. And the applicant does not con commence construction or enlargement of the expansion? No. No, the applicant has not. Okay. So that's uh, those are comments. And we've got a motion on the table. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Yeah, I, I, I think you've done a really nice job of putting this together. Uh, it looks nice. It's, gonna, it's actually going to be a, probably a nice addition to the neighborhood. So I'm certainly all for it. Thank you. For the discussion, seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very room. much. As usual, nice work. I just have to sign um, your vote. What your vote was? Yes. Or no? Yes. Okay. Next appeal, appeal number uh, 2573. It's a miscellaneous appeal request by Bailey's Seafood Restaurant. 165 Pine Point Road, Assessor's Map R68, Parcel 6B. Do we have represented? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Sean Frank. I'm a civil engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, here on behalf of Stanley and Nancy Bailey. Uh, the site is the Bailey Seafood down at the corner of uh, Pine Point Road and uh, uh, Old Blue Point Road. Uh, it's been there for a long time. Uh, a couple of years ago was the intent of the owners to expand the restaurant. Uh, they actually started the process, uh, started working with staff, maybe even had a meeting with the planning board. 
uh, based upon some issues that arose with that in terms of parking and those types of things, they decided not to pursue the site plan any longer. And it was their intent basically to take an area that had been used historically for uh, uh, picnic tables outside, outside seating, if you will, uh, and to enclose that area and to enclose it to actually include a small kitchen area for the cooking of lobsters and that type of thing. They actually came to the board. Uh, and did they come to the board? I'm sorry, Mr. Yes, Chairman, I, I didn't realize that. At no, the that's time. okay. Just to further the information. But not, but not for that. But not for that. But, yeah, not for this. But for the, the uh, driveways and a couple of other things. Okay. I don't remember exactly. So uh, based upon that, they actually they started. Uh, they they you know added on to the edge of the parking area the yellow shows, if you will, uh, on the the highlighted yellow uh, additional paved area that's out there. They basically paved. Uh, around the edge of the parking lot to kind of uh, fix that up a little bit. Uh, they paved the area where the picnic tables had been seated, and in that same area was they put a concrete pad. And again, the idea of the concrete pad was so they could put an enclosure for the cooking of lobsters. Uh, uh, the the town uh, code enforcement officer uh, saw the work going on. Uh, sent them a cease and desist, if you will. Uh, we got together. Obviously, there was the discussion about uh, the town council uh, not in, not going forward with their uh, liquor license and their food license. Uh, so based upon that, uh, they retained the my services of my firm. We went out and located so that we could determine, like I say, the exact uh, areas of the additional impervious areas that are on site. Uh, they have agreed uh, that it will just be used for the seating of picnic tables. So. Uh, basically, we're taking an area that had been grassed in the past uh, and is now going to be pavement and, uh, and uh, concrete. Uh, so basically, if you will, just more formal uh, seating uh, for the picnic tables. Uh, they do put up a tent seasonally uh, in the summer. Uh, they always have, or they have for years, and, and that's intended to uh, go forward. Uh, but the, uh, the water service and the sewer service uh, are not connected. They won't be utilized. Again, the intent of that originally had been for, uh, for the sink that was going to be within the lobster cookhouse, if you will. Uh, they are certainly aware, if you will, uh, that uh, that's all that they're limited to is basically, you know, the placement of the picnic tables and that's it. Um, and that if they ever want to do anything else, they in fact have to come back either to this board or to the planning board. Uh, we were in front of the planning board last time. Uh, again, what we basically looked at is a more formal seating for what had been there in the past. Uh, so that it really didn't have any major impact, hopefully, in terms of the neighborhood itself. Um, I know the applicant has discussed uh, the situation with the majority of his neighboring property owners. Uh, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I conclude my presentation would request uh, a approval from the Zoning Board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any letters? Nothing there was none. No. no. I'll open the public hearing. If we want to speak, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, come back to the board for questions, comments. Just a one clarification when they came to us they didn't do anything with the approval that we granted back two years ago correct? not that I'm aware of so, no so this isn't related to this that was my understanding that was going to be an association with the enlargement of the restaurant itself and so this piece of this pad here they just decided to put down um, their thought again based upon my discussion with them is that this would allow them to more formalize like I say the, uh, the, the the picnic table seating area and to include actually they were planning to cook some lobsters out there and enclose the area uh, for some reason they didn't think they needed permits to do that and they went forward with it uh, until like I say until Brian stopped by and uh, uh, we're where we are now so uh, the, the concrete and pavement are in uh, the utilities were actually extended but not connected uh, so it's a stub that's the it's capped off in terms of the sewer within the concrete itself the water was never connected at the building uh, so again the intent now is to basically utilize the existing pavement and concrete uh, for what it's always been used for which is basically you know the placement of, of uh, picnic tables and the seasonal use of, of a tent so it'll be so, outdoors. so there's two things you're looking for is a tent and it's picnic tables uh, yes and did you say they always used picnic tables here? That's my understanding, at least for a long time. Always would probably be a strong word. I, I think for, for a long what time. About, I just what about the tents? I mean, I live up the street, and I'm just racking my brain about the tent. My understanding is they, they put the tent up over the picnic tables. Yeah. And again, tent, I think it might, maybe more of an awning. Maybe I'm yeah. using the wrong word. Or at least a cover, if you will, of seasonally over the picnic tables. Yeah, canopy, I think. Canopy. Okay. So, uh, board questions? Mr. Chair, I think when we addressed this back when we originally looked at it, not the specifics of this, but I think the parking was addressed. 
and they created new parking, correct? I don't think they have a follow through with any of that. I think the plan was, if I remember correctly, it was going to be in the back there and it was going to be grassed. Because I thought they had paved new spaces. Um, well, the, the, they, they, uh, the parking was for the expansion of the restaurant, which didn't occur. Right, so. the, the, the pavement that did occur, if you will, was just kind of that, that edge had all been kind of chewed up, so they didn't actually add any parking, if you will. They just kind of uh, it was more along the edge. If you see it, it's almost like a strip along the edge of the pavement, Mr. Chairman. Okay. In, in Sean, did, did they extend the paving on the top on the uh, on the uh, back side of the parking lot as well? Yes, they did. Yeah. Right through yeah. here. Yes, but again, I, I might have said it was that the, the parking spaces were there. Right. Yeah. So it's so, a it just kind of added to the pavement, but it didn't create new parking. That's, that's my understanding. That's correct. So long, Steph, anything to add on this? Um, Sean, I think, covered most of it. Um, again, just getting to the, the legal basis for this, um, it's an R2 zone. It's a residential zone. It's an existing legally nonconforming uh, use uh, that has uh, that was in existence prior to zoning it's been continued uh, it hasn't been interrupted so therefore any expansion or addition to that non-conforming use has to come to the board for a miscellaneous appeal and that's why they're here and this in this case it is an after the fact sort of expansion although no structures have been have been built uh, we we put the stop work order on it only because we had no idea what was actually going to occur there was construction there there were new things going in and we just didn't know what it was going to be but it was clearly an expansion of the use and as Sean said I think the original intent was to kind of have a full functioning uh, cooking food prep kind of thing out there and uh, and now they're not going to go forward with that um, so uh, and, and as you know this has already gone to because it's a miscellaneous appeal it has to go to planning board for an advisory opinion uh, I believe the planning board in, in your packets you have the planning board minutes they were I guess uh, they, they weren't negative so I guess we we'll call them positive <laughs> Brian yes to get they said they put electrical out to this little pad out there is mm -hmm. it do they need a permit to do something like that uh, it's to? never been connected I don't believe so they can do is it, it connected is there a meter? I don't believe my understanding is the utilities have not been connected Oh, perhaps electrical I think maybe the electrical had always been out there I think they put it underground the first they, the overhead. they've only stubbed it up it doesn't go to anything yeah, exactly it's not Nothing doing there. anything there's a, meter, there's a meter out there I believe so but yes they, to answer your question they would need permits both electrical and plumbing permits as well as sanitary district permits to connect all of those utilities so they the fact that they put it there doesn't matter. It's if they actually use it. It's if they actually use it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And the stub, just for clear, again, the stub right. is actually it, for the sewer is under the concrete, but they actually capped it off in the concrete, and the water does extend over to the building that was actually connected to the, the water service in the building. That connection has not been made. So, again, there's no doubt about it. They were certainly intending to have a little a cooking place out there where with you know cook some lobsters right there and, and pass them out and. They thought it was a wonderful idea, and uh, you know, and based upon the reality of the situation, they're asking now it is an enlargement because, in fact, there is more impervious area there than it had been there before. Uh, but from a use standpoint, they're asking that they basically uh, get to use it for. My understanding is what they've used it for years. So, do we know whether where the, they propose to put the canopy? Is it going to be on the paved portion or it's the concrete on the paved portion? Yes. Okay. So one section's paved and one is concrete. Yes, that's correct. The pavement that you see is in yellow. Uh, the concrete was in the uh, the orange, at least from my highlighted here, and I think we tried to call it out on the plan. I know it's probably hard to see on your plan without the yeah, color. It's labeled on the plan. And what about the, Mr. Uh, Lawrence, what about the issues of um, coverage, impervious surface? Um, that, uh, I'm going to defer to the planning board. Did the issue of impervious surface ever? We, we did discuss a little bit. I. I and they asked me for the number. I did calculate that number. I apologize. I probably wrote it down somewhere, and I don't know if I brought that with me. What's the wrong thing? It was a rather obviously from a, an overall standpoint. Oh, building. Uh, it wasn't a large number. I think it was like 4,000 square feet, perhaps, off the top of my head, of new impervious area. This this lot is not in shoreline zoning or floodplain. Impervious. Right. So impervious surface from an R2 district standpoint isn't even a 
a consideration. Okay. Um, it's building coverage. Building coverage is limited to 20 percent. And that looks like that's. But uh, my, my my suggestion is if the planning board didn't raise it as an issue after having gone through all of the other. Right, and we did discuss it with the planning board. The stormwater was just making sure the stormwater is going where it always went. It was directed in the same location. Again, for the amount of impervious, we didn't see that having any uh, significant increase or a measurable increase, certainly in terms of the runoff from the site. Um, and I will say that the planning board is very frank uh, uh, with the applicants that, you know, uh, uh, they understood this was kind of an after the fact that they were kind of using it for the same thing it was before. It was a lawn area, now it's impervious. Uh, but obviously, you know, uh, they would have no sympathy for, you know, for any more after the facts, if you will, that, you know, uh, they needed to understand that uh, any enlargement or any expansions down there needed to come back to the board for approval prior to occurring. I guess my question would be I see numerous <laughs> notes in here that. Communication with the town then non-communication with the town and then they come back for their liquor license So it seems like twice they've come back for their liquor license and the town requested Communication and things to be resolved the first time around it didn't happen and now they're coming back for their liquor license again and I mean I'm, I'm concerned with the fact that there doesn't seem to be any communication after it's been requested from Well, I, I could just tell you about my little bit of it. Okay. I first heard of this I guess it was last fall um, and I think it was when I think we had the cease and desist and uh, uh, I we did come in and, and sit down with staff uh, and you know at that time I think they were still proposing if you will to enclose it and to do the little kitchen area and that type of thing <clears throat> um, I didn't hear from the, the owners for a little while and they had just some personal issues when it came right down to it some health issues if you will uh, a tree through the home so that they were just off on other things it's the winter the restaurants closed down and I just think that that took a back seat I had talked to them and they basically were saying they were just going to use it for the seating of picnic tables at that point in time and to be honest with you I thought they had just had that conversation with the code enforcement officer and they were saying well if you're not enclosing it you're not using it that probably seems it was just going to be for the seating of picnic tables um, everything was well and good until we kind of heard liquor license that's when it came back to me if you will and and they've retained my services to uh, actually pull this application together. So um, you're right, it has been a little stop and go and stop and go. Um, but hopefully we're pulling it all together today. Um, you're using the uh, number one criteria for the miscellaneous appeal to permit the uh, non-conforming use of land, buildings, or structures to be enlarged, extended, expanded, resumed, or converted. Is that correct? Is that yes, the category exactly. Using? Why didn't this come before us as a... Um, as a um, uh, administrative appeal it, it, it would, why would it because we stopped it the town stopped it we, they're not they're not they're not arguing that we were wrong in stopping it okay <laughs> I would explain that, that's <laughs> one that's one thing you're not arguing that we no, were no, within our again, rights to stop know, the work uh, there you go like, right. we're just backing up and doing this the way it should have been done from the first but I will just say once I, you know and again we met with staff and at least we did come in apparent that you know and I think they found they got it that you know uh, any expansions out there regardless of what it is needs to come to this board before it actually occurs mark you had indicated that they had come before the board before to expand the actual restaurant correct is that correct they were going to do is they're going to basically divide or define a de the um, so they knew procedurally they had to come to the board to add to the restaurant correct and that that never went through they actually got approved. They got it approved, did. but they never followed through. So they knew they had to come to the board to get it, and then they didn't do it, and they started doing the pad instead without coming to the board. Is correct. This, is that correct? Yes. My understanding of their thought was if they weren't adding to the restaurant, that it wasn't the need for the board. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the last appeal they were more looking to be more in compliance or something to do with ADA. Yes. And defining the lot lines, if I remember correctly, between yeah, the restaurant. Yeah, lot lines, additional parking, and ADA for people on the first floor, I believe, to easier access, I believe, was part of it. And I believe they were going to close the upstairs part of it and expand the downstairs. Yeah, some string about the call as well. The, the the challenges I see with this, just off the top of my head, is is and and I've asked this question of this long staff, and and I. I have always understood, but I may be mistaken, uh, that a pad or cement or a uh, sidewalk or a patio, if it's on the ground, 
that's not considered a structure. But if you put a deck, wood, on the ground, even if it's only right on the ground, that's now a structure, and that does have to meet the setbacks. Whereas just the the cement portion doesn't. I, the, where that falls back in mind is when you see driveways that are sometimes shared, or when you see a driveway that comes up along the side of a home. That's my interpretation. I don't see it anywhere in here. Um, Mr. Longstaff's interpretation is different than that. I, I'll let you speak for yourself. But there, I think there's room on that issue as to why they may felt that they didn't need to come, but that's very different than putting a tent on because now you've got a structure. If, in fact, you're defining uh, a structure as being anything above the flat surface, you could say, if you felt the way I do, that a flat surface is, is just making a patio. And it's fine. It can go inside the setback under my assumptions. The, the change to me comes up when we go to putting a structure on the, the pad. And I, I don't know how other board members feel about it, but that's where I've been kind of bouncing around in my head. Well, Mr. Chair, I mean, I understand the pad, but they also ran plumbing out to that that's not connected and also ran electrical out to that that's not connected. <coughs> it was clearly intent. Well, is the electric connected? It's not. No, it's yeah. cat. No, my understanding is none of the services are connected. And that's where I'm struggling with it, because it was clearly intent to make it something more than a pad. If you're running plumbing and you're running electrical out to it. Thanks, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I think <clears throat> my kind of my take on that is that I agree. If there was a permanent structure coming out there, then that that would be different. Uh, but uh, I don't consider a tent or an awning a permanent structure. Uh, you know, so to me, it's still just a pad with a tent. Now, whether you're going to have whether you were going to have plumbing or not, then obviously I think that you would have had to come up. To get permits before any of that was ever hooked up, or if there was a permanent sink put in, anything that was put in that was going to be permanent uh, above that pad, yeah. Mr. Chair, I would also add that uh, I agree with Mr. Stark in that defining permanent versus a fixed uh, a fixed structure versus a portable structure, a temporary structure. Whether it's a, I don't I don't consider a table le or even a, a small canopy to be permanent structure unless it was there all four seasons of the year. It's there for a small time of the year and it's easily removed and taken down. Um, I, I, I don't uh, respectfully dis I respectfully disagree. On the, uh, on the subject of the tent itself, this, that is actually, I believe, per re regulation, correct me if I'm wrong, that is considered a structure. It uh, doesn't have to be permanent. Uh, if I'm correct, uh, am I correct about that? I may not be. We don't. We don't, <clears throat> we don't define that. We don't differentiate between that. So it's very hard to say whether it is or it isn't by definition. Okay. It's more, it's more, what do you consider? In the past, i tell you what we did with the Black Point Inn. They wanted to put a tent up and the Black Point Inn needed, we treated that as a... A tent or a canopy? It was a tent. Okay. I don't think this is going to be a tent. It's never been a tent. It's been a canopy. It doesn't doesn't have four sides on it. And it's been there before. It's been there before. Okay. It's never been permitted. <laughs> it's never been permitted. Like most of the stuff at Bailey's, it never gets permitted. But it's been there. And now we have an opportunity. As as I understand it now, we have an opportunity to either say yes or no. It's a permitted structure or not, or a permitted use. Or, or not because it's never been addressed most of the time when you do a site plan review and Sean and, and both everybody in this room knows that process any <coughs> site improvement whether it's temporary permanent or otherwise gets reviewed and approved by planning board this is never the tent thing the canopy thing never came up it's just there was no reason for it to come up because there was nothing going on until that prior project of expanding the restaurant I don't know if the canopy even was discussed at that point. Mm. It just appeared there one day, as far as I can determine. I've asked everybody I can think of, and it appeared there. How, how long ago? Just last year? I right? have no idea. I've only been here three years. It was here <laughs> when I got here. So. <laughs> three years. So who knows when it appeared? It's just that it was never it was never permitted. It was never not permitted. It appeared. Is it a structure? I don't really think it's a structure. I don't really think it's a, anything to permit. It's more the location, you know, does it block traffic? Does it 
create a hazard for anybody? I don't know. I don't think it does. It covers some picnic tables. But it just never got approved as part of a site, an overall site improvement as anything else, parking or a dumpster enclosure or whatever. It just never got discussed. So now we have an opportunity to say yes or no on the canopy. I don't think it's a structure. It's certainly nothing I'd need to permit. Um, because it doesn't have four sides to it, um, mm -hmm, okay. you know what I mean? It's not It's not really enclosing anything. It's just something overhead. Almost like an umbrella. Well, yeah. It's a sunshade. It's a rain shade. It's whatever. It's just there to keep the sun or the rain off people's heads. And just for clarification, just to continue this position, if it were four-sided, what would you call it? I don't know. Structure. Depends on it depends because it's still temporary. It's still you know it's just there for the season. They don't leave it up all winter. Oh, I got And how long has been there? I, yeah, I, I, I mean I, I it's even just one it. of those anomalies. Nobody has an answer for. I I don't have an answer. You know, you ride by on down Blackway, and you know the winter there's nothing going on, and in the summer you know Ken's is open and Bailey's. And the, the one thing about it. I, I don't mean to interrupt. The one thing about a tent is that the fire department issues a permit for a tent. To make sure that it's fire, it meets the fire retardant um, standards. So they they do for events and that kind of stuff. I didn't know that either. Yeah, they they do that, but it's not a still not a structure. It's nothing that we issue a permit for, from the building department. Interesting. So, you know, I don't know. Okay. Maybe that's a a discussion to have in the future and whether or not we want to regulate that sort of stuff. But all I can tell you is I have no I have no standard, no, nothing in the ordinance that talks about it. So it's just one of those things. To me, it's like a clothesline post. <laughs> it's there. I don't know. It serves a purpose. I don't permit those, and I don't really care. I guess the, the difference to me on this issue here is that it's in setback. That, that is true. It's, it, it potentially could be, yeah, absolutely could be within the setback. It kind of depends on where they put it. But Have you looked at the ability to put that tent in a situation where it wouldn't be in the setback? Uh, again, Mr. Chairman, no, I really haven't. I've, they, like I say, where the pavement area is, that's where they have, you know, the the the, the supports, if you will, for the location of the legs associated with the the awning, I guess I'll call it. Um, so uh, no, I, I I I don't know where else they could put. I mean, certainly, is there other places? To put that? You know, I hate to see them cutting trees down or doing any. I guess that would be probably be an enlargement at that point in time too, right? If they kind of went along the back. So, um. but again, I mean, I bring it up. If it's not a structure requiring a permit, then it doesn't really need to meet setbacks. <laughs> it's a landscaping feature, you know, no different than the concrete pad. I guess if you're going to talk about that. And so the motivation for for putting the stock work on <coughs> was strictly because you didn't know what was going on. There were there were no permits pulled for anything. We saw trenches. We saw concrete being poured. We saw. Uh, sewer hookups being installed there was all kinds of stuff going on there and there was never any discussion of it with planning board as a site improvement it, all of that stuff would have had to go to planning board whether it was any structure on it or not no different than adding park and adding or subtracting parking spots you don't have any photos or anything of what it looks like right now um, I saw right now I don't I don't I don't find it you have by any chance that'd be very helpful I apologize. That's a great idea. I, I wish I'd done that. I mean, the, the good news from, 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 from the Bailey's point of view is it's a miscellaneous appeal, so it doesn't have any comments about uh, starting prior as opposed to the special exception. Um, but the, there's still a lot of other issues we have to deal with. You okay, may have a question, Sue. Well, I'm sort of a new member, so I'm just kind of curious as to the fact that the actual owners aren't here tonight and that some of the questions aren't being answered. Is that, I mean, if we don't feel like our questions are being answered. You you can at any point, any board member can request to be tabled to another meeting, oh. the following oh. meeting, for uh, more clar okay. clarity. Uh, we usually work it through before right. we get to that, but that's a legitimate question. So, if you look at the if you look at our GIS map up here, you can see the picnic tables. Let me see if I can use my handy dandy pointer. So you see this area right here. What yep. happened? Careful, there was an airplane going over. 
I don't want to <laughs> poke anybody's eye out here. So right in this area, you can see those picnic tables, right? Uh, no, but we'll believe you. Oh, for God. <laughs> Just say yes. Do you, yes. Do you see those picnic tables, Mark? <laughs> Those See little, all those little dots? dots? Uh, those are green tables. is grass, mm, green blue is water. What's that thing? Yeah. And Brown and is picnic table. Mark Brown is barely picnic table. The computer. These are all. These are all picnic tables. Okay. You see? So that's the area that they, you know, and that's 2012. Okay. That's 2012 photography. There is no canopy in this picture, but I don't know what time of year the picture was taken either. So it looks like it was probably fall or summer. Yeah. So. We do have a history of the picnic tables. Again, I don't <coughs> think that picnic table, by definition, is something that triggers this issue either. Again, that's not a structure, in my opinion, based on my understanding, whereas a deck is something that, that is, um, again, based on my opinion. Um, the picnic tables are just objects that are a bicycle, no different than you can put something like that on there. I personally think it comes down to being what um, Mr. Crockett mentioned, which is obviously the intent was more than than just this, it is disturbing that they are not here. It is also disturbing that they were putting in electrical and plumbing before uh, coming to the board, uh, to, to the town. Uh, I thought that was a requirement. Uh, so I think those are two legitimate issues. Uh, but I'll let the board kind of lead the discussion as to where you'd like to go with this. Well, I think, like you said, it's disturbing that they're not here. but. It kind of goes back to my earlier point of their services being obtained kind of contingent upon the new liquor license being permitted, where there was no discussion. I understand they may have had some issues or things going on, but it'd be nice to see them here before us actually making an effort to plead their case or tell us what's going on or what their intent was or what was the plan or, or something. I would have to agree with that. However, we don't we don't typically hold anyone to that standard that they have to be there themselves. They can assign someone to come for them. That's true. I'm not saying we have to, but I'm saying it would be nice in this instance because there's a lot of things that are left unanswered. Now we did find is that 2012 also, or is that a different? No, this name? is newer. Um, this is uh, well, I don't know. I don't know what you. This is Google Earth. Is that, that the canopy? It should say yeah. in the bottom right hand corner the white text right there where your mouse is. Mark can probably see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if Mark can read that. There's a tough crowd. <laughs> oh, there you go, Mark. Can you see it now? I don't know. I see in 1998, but I don't believe that's 1998. Bottom right hand side? I don't mm -hmm. see anything. That over doesn't there. say it. Oh, okay. I see 1998 on the other side, but yeah, I thought that's it. Well, I'm not clever enough right? to figure out. Oh, you know what it might be? It might be hidden guns. Your, your bar. Well, I don't know. I don't know what. I can't answer that question. All I can say is that there's the tent. And it's right in the same area where, see, those are picnic tables with umbrellas over the top of them. You can see the shadows on the, mm -hmm. on the grass. So right behind that tent are picnic tables with umbrellas. Now that's before the expansion, right? Because it looks like from There's the... No, there hasn't been any expansion. Well, the parking <coughs> spaces yes. were pushed back. Yes, The parking that's lot right. expansion... Basically, you can see from where that edge of pavement is now, you're right. Probably the, the pavement in is probably right from where it was now, basically probably to the back of that tent. Right, so now where you're proposing the tent is actually farther back, it looks like, closer to the road than what it is represented there. That would be a true statement. Yeah, it's, it's more on a perpendicular also to... Uh, to um, Old Blue Point Road. Well, I, I don't know. I, I mean, you guys are getting into, I think, <laughs> to get back to the point is what you're, what you're faced with is a decision is, is whether or not to approve this as an expansion of an, as just an existing non-conforming use. There's your edge of the existing pavement as it was before. There it is. There's the new pad, there's the new concrete pad. I think if you look at that Google Earth photo, it's it's in the same basic location. Um, I don't know. So I mean whether it was you know, whether it's a foot this way or a foot that way, I don't know, does that really makes any difference, does it? 
Well, it depends. It depends on what we're coming for. If we're coming for uh, seven. We need to focus on that. All right. That's where the facts are. Mr. Chair, do we have the questions on Sure. Did you say a question? No, I said, are we going to go over the questions on Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I thought you said you had a no, question. No, I'm... Anybody else have any? So we, um, this line is here. Miscellaneous appeals, uh, we start off with the permit non conforming use of land. That's what we're about here. Um, and then we go to uh, the requirement being special exception. Special exception, which does go to special exception. Which should be 26. Uh, 26. Uh, Are you looking for the special exception criteria? Right, yeah, I got it right here. Well, it's in the chapter. So we've got uh, standards for special exceptions. We'll read them in and we'll go from there. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. I'd like to reply to that. I, I, again, I, I guess as we were looking at this, right, in terms of the proposed use, we saw it as an existing use, if you will, with now a concrete and a pavement pad. So, uh, you know, I guess we would say that, you know, the proposed use is, in fact, an existing use. So. Uh, it doesn't create an unsanitary or healthy condition. Okay. And the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. And we didn't see any real change to the, uh, to the existing traffic conditions. And the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require substantially different, a uh, greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Again, Mr. Chairman, I don't see any reason why I would. And the proposed use will not result in sediment or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. It will not. And the proposed use will be uh, compatible with existing uses in the with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, again, what we basically had was an existing use that is now, rather than lawn, is, is pavement and, uh, and uh, concrete, at least from uh, the, the appeal we're looking at today. And it's not in the shoreland zone. Shoreland zone. They have the, the right title. Um, they have the technical financial ability to deal with what we have to deal with and uh, be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. So we come back to the board with, and I'd like to go through each one of those with the board. And, and I'm I'm struggling with a couple of things. I do think it matters that it's inside the setback because of it with children and traffic and safety. So I think that does affect an issue there for me personally. I don't have a philosophical problem with the pad, like I said, and I don't really have a philosophical problem with a tent, not a tent, but a canopy. I think it's just a big uh, umbrella. I think, how do you define what's when is, when is a canopy an umbrella? When is an umbrella a canopy? Uh, but I, we don't have any facts. I mean, we don't even know the distance from the corner of the shed to the, to the road. It looks like 10 feet, 15 feet. Um, if you think of a parking lot as 17 feet long, a, a parking spot is 17 feet long, it's probably about maybe 20 feet. Um, so I guess the question we can go down is well, let's, let's just see where everybody falls. It's the easiest way. Um, so the first question, we'll start with Mr. Crockett, if you'll pull that, Mr. Crockett. 
The proposed use will not create unsanitary and unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, other aspects of its design or operation. As far as I can see, I, I would agree that it wouldn't, but I don't know with the hookup what's going on with that. So. I, I would say it, as, it, as it pertains to this issue, we right would specify yeah, that there are no agree. hookups. I would say that there could be no hookups for electrical or plumbing as it pertains to this issue and our approval. So if we if everybody comfortable with that concept as we go forward? Yes. So we at least have a bent, we have a line of we have a demarcation line. So at least we have some place to go. So based on that, do you feel comfortable with number one? Uh, Mr. Stark? Yeah, I'm I'm totally comfortable with number one. I, I don't see any change there. Okay. Uh, Likewise it's not gonna be any more or less than what is already occurring there at the location. So it wouldn't have any effect. I agree. Okay. The next one is, and I, I also agree, I, I could get nitpicky, but I'm not going to. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian pat traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. And again, remember, it's, it's vehicular and or pedestrian traffic conditions. Mr. See, I don't, I don't see an issue with that because it appears that it's, they pushed the parking lot back a little bit, so I don't, I, I think there's more room for pedestrians, and I think the seating's more out of the way, so I don't think that's an issue. Yeah, I would have to agree. I don't, if, if anything, it would probably make it a little bit safer for both pedestrians and the uh, vehicles moving in and out of the area. I would have to agree, Mr. Stark and Mr. Uh, Roy. I agree. And no one sees a problem with it being closer to Old Blue Point Road. And there's a sidewalk is on the other side of the road, right there. I guess what I'm thinking about is a child that might be at the big table, darting out over there. It's closer than it, it looks. I guess the argument is that the table's closer than that anyway. But, but it's uh, been it's been happening like this for it, years. Some it, of those picnic tables have been that close since 2012. Okay. So I'm, I'm okay Probably with that. well before that. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I would agree. I don't. I don't see anything that's being created differently by doing this. I mean, it's a designed area now, as opposed to a tarred surface, I guess. Again, I don't, I don't see any change in that at all, and I, I think it's very substantially the same as, uh, as Ken's has up the street as well. Okay. I agree it's nothing more than what is already there. Brian, you said that the fire department regulates if someone wants to put up a tent. It's a full tent, yeah. It's a full tent. Yep. So it's not an extra hazard if there's a tent at a restaurant. It doesn't have a tent. No sides on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. No problem. And the pure use will not create um, <coughs> sediment or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. Again, I, I don't know on that. I mean, as it sits right now, I would say probably not because it's not hooked up, but I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't see how it can have any substantial change from, from what it was before. I agree with Mr. Stark and Mr. Coffey. I agree. And it's not an issue land zone. They do own the property. Uh, they have technical and financial ability to meet the requirements. And uh, compatible use is, ex uh, ex uh, excuse me, the <coughs> use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. And I'm assuming they're just keeping their regular hours. It doesn't, yeah. that doesn't. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, the hours haven't changed. Okay. Yeah, it's the same as it has been, so I don't see any anything more there that we need to address. Yeah, I, again, I, I don't see any change in that. Uh, in fact, I think the hours are shorter, or the season is certainly shorter than, than their co competition up the street, so I, I don't see any change on this. Okay. I agree. I agree. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> use those as all findings of fact. Um, and I think at the same time, we can tie those into the conclusions of law that we're all sitting in the same place. Here's, here's my thoughts for whatever it's worth, and this is not an emotion. 
um, I would require that it can only be a canopy and can be there uh, May, June, July, August, September, that range. Uh, and uh, <coughs> that there's no water or electric hooked up to that area uh, unless they want to come back and go for a regular permit. I think one of the issues that the planning board mentions, and so is Mr. Longstaff, is they, there's, a, there's a pattern of behavior that um, is noticed by the town. And so I think at some point we have to set a line that says whoever it is, I'm not trying to set an advantage. I'm not trying to set a standard for <coughs> the entire world, but just this. There's a trend here. This building, and if we don't get it under control, it could become bigger. And so I guess my point is, by stopping the water and the electric, that's something that's easily manageable by the the code enforcement, because the, they'll see it. We're saying no, and we're saying that um, it can only be a canopy, not a tent. And they need to come back if they wanted to do a tent, not go to the fire department, but come back to this this board. Um, we have the right to do that if we choose. And then I think that's put enough of a, I think that gets the point across that they should talk, talk with the town whenever they do anything, which is kind of a basic rule of business in any town. You kind of ask somebody because it's safer that way. Um, so I guess that's that's where my most of my angst is coming from, and trying to get something strong enough, not penalizing them, but at the same point getting it across that there are procedures, and there are reasons for these systems, whether we agree with them or not. And some of them I agree with, and some of them I don't. I think it's concerning they are familiar with the procedures and didn't follow them. It seems right, and that's, that's exactly right. I, I I would agree. I think that's my biggest concern is. It clearly came before us two years ago. It was an extensive discussion. We went over a lot of different things, a lot of requests we had, and things that were put in place. And it just seems like common sense would have said, we need to go back and see if there's anything we need to get addressed at this point now that we're doing some things differently. So do I have a motion? I move to approve with the stated contingencies. Just repeating the. Do you have a second on that? Second. And that is no water or electric can be hooked up. The tent needs to be temporary and seasonal. Uh, sorry, the canopy <laughs> needs to be temporary and seasonal. In the event they want to do anything more than the canopy, including as low as a tent, they would need to come back to this board. We don't need to go over anything more with the mis miscellaneous appeals on, right? We're no. good with that. Okay. And is that the conditions that the board wants to see? Yes, I'll like second. So the uh, motion I, is second? Yes, second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Just to have it on, uh, just to have it recorded, and obviously, like you said, Mark, the planning board made an issue of this earlier, of the repeat pattern. Um, the uh, they should be aware that any thoughts of putting up a permanent structure in the future because of what has happened already with the underground currently capped utilities that they have to go through the necessary steps of permitting and do the due diligence of going through the proper channels with the town um, and again stress this to them that they have to do this otherwise there will be more obviously there are more significant consequences to not doing that right now it's just uh, it's a basic but uh, moving forward they need to be very cognizant of that. And just in defense of the whole process, um, I grew up here. I remember when Route 1 was two lanes. So I get it, they did too. And you kind of, the world was very different, um, for better in my opinion. But uh, a lot has changed in this town right now, one of the largest communities in the state. So you go from a two lane road with Route 1 and uh, houses on Route 1 to what it is now. I understand how most people that have been here forever think. So I understand the logic of just kind of thinking you can do what you used to do, but we really can't anymore. It, it just, we've lost that, that ability. So th I think that's what really what the whole thing comes down to being. <coughs> so we've got uh, any other comments on this? Seeing none, all in favor? 
That's unanimous. Thank, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you much from the board for listening to us tonight. And uh, I do thank hopefully that the, uh, the message was heard. Thank you very much. Thank you for the help. Year with these pictures taken? Oh, <laughs> three days ago. That I'll wait till you start it. Okay. Is it 340 or 350? Pardon? 340 Pine Point Road, not 350. It is actually. Uh, it's actually three. The building is three 340 Pine Point Road, um, but the, the property is. 340 and 350. Okay, so why don't we, why don't we qualify 340 and 350 for the record? Uh, so this is appeal number 2574. It's a hardship variance request by John Reddy doing business as Reddy Real Estate LLC. <coughs> 340 and 350 uh, Pine Point Road. This is map R88, parcel 8, but I'm not sure that 340 is in that same map area. So we'll. It's probably it a different number. The, the, the map and lot is correct. Yeah. Okay. It's so. the address. Okay. So just so we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Got it. Great. Um, welcome. I understand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions here this evening uh, representing Ready Seafood and John Ready. Um, he did ask me to extend his apologies. He is on a business trip. He had planned to be here last night, um, but given the uh, conflicting uh, times, kind of left at oh, dark 30 this morning. And, uh, uh, let the board know that you would otherwise plan to be here and would like to be, but uh, ask that I take care of that instead. So what we're looking for um, is relatively simple in the overall scheme of things, and that is a, an extension of a loading dock uh, by about 16 feet from where it is currently. By way of orientation, uh, this is the building in question. Obviously, this is the loading dock that is currently there, and we're looking at coming out in this particular direction. Uh, with that orientation, I'm going to get a little bit smaller. Uh, as far as the scale is concerned. This shows the overall site. Uh, here is the proposed dock that would extend uh, next to the, uh, the large nitrogen tank that is uh, fenced out down in this area. And uh, this is the area in question. And what that means is um, Scarborough has a regulation that states that uh, for any activity that's in a shoreland zone, any building that's in a shoreland zone, for any type of expansion, the expansion in this particular zone is certainly allowed uh, and it's allowed for uh, anything up to 75 feet away from a wetland area or uh, down as close as 25 feet from a wetland area if there can be a corresponding 25 feet of uh, vegetated surface, either existing or planted, uh, between the actual water course or the edge of the wetlands and uh, 25 feet from that. Uh, in this, so the reason we're here as a hardship variance is because it's obviously in the shoreland zone. Again, by way of orientation, I think we probably already know, but this is right over the Pine Point Bridge, uh, just on the left-hand side as we're heading down toward the water, just before the Clam Bake Restaurant, which is actually that red building that's shown on the far side there. Um, what happened was, uh, uh, brief history, Ready Seafood is a lobster processing company that has been in existence for quite a while um, and is uh, growing substantially. Uh, the predominance of their product was at the start of their business in Canada. And they really wanted to make it, uh, bring it here to the United States, more specifically to Maine. This is where they're from. Uh, but there were very limited options, uh, primarily because when you can imagine when processing lobster, uh, because lobster is a live commodity, literally, it has to be kept alive <coughs> until it's actually <laughs> processed, uh, it needs seawater. Uh, brackish water is okay, but it has to have a saline content that will keep it alive uh, during the times that uh, they need to have them alive before they actually shell them and process them and send them out. So as you can imagine, there are very, very limited areas uh, in the entire state of Maine, actually, that has this type of commercial complex uh, relative to being immediately adjacent to seawater that can be pumped into the tanks and then uh, recirculated this way. 
They looked for quite a number of years. They were actually spread out in a couple of different places, which uh, up and down the coast, smaller places, which was very inefficient. Uh, and they were looking for years to be able to find places. They actually looked at this one originally, but it wasn't zoned appropriately until about three years ago, uh, when the zone actually changed specifically to encourage this type of development. Uh, these buildings and the lot, the lot ex existed for literally over a century. The buildings, uh, there's no actual date on the, uh, the town as to when the buildings were there, uh, but suffice it to say they're, they're uh, well over 50 years. Uh, the point being is that they, they predate zoning as far as that's concerned. And the issue we have is they need a loading dock. The building that we were looking at has two garage bays in it, loading bays, which was integral to their operation. Uh, the buildings themselves are large enough to be able to expand into, but the bottleneck for the operation is really the unloading and loading capacity with the trucks at the actual loading dock itself. The bays are not intended to be expanded, but because of the operation of this particular type of business, they have quite a number of trucks that are coming down both from Canada and from other areas of the coastal Maine where the lobsters are caught. Uh, they purchase them directly from the lobstermen, they put them in the trucks. Uh, they can't, they're, again, it's a live commodity, so they need to get here quickly. Uh, so they need to move rather fast. And the bottleneck being once they get here, even though they've got scheduled timings that are supposed to keep things moving relatively smoothly as far as uh, truck deliveries are concerned, as you can imagine, something that's coming down from Washington County doesn't always get here exactly at the time that it's supposed to. Um, so while they've got a very efficiently run uh, organization, it's tough in some cases because they've got uh, three trucks uh, in many cases now, uh, one of which has to wait to be unloaded, but they can't really wait. So the other truck ends up parking out in the parking lot and they've got all their people kind of running out to try to unload something from the back of a T-50 from a trailer um, to be able to then pull it back up into the truck bays. It's just not very efficient. It's not particularly good on the people who are doing that. That's all solved by being able to put an external loading dock, which they now have this but they would like to be able to have for that third truck a loading dock where they can actually have maneuverability to be able to then wheel the carts for the, for the lob lobster um, into the actual unit it's themselves and then they process everything within the building. Normally not a problem. Um, the, uh, the DEP, and a little bit of history as far as the site is concerned as well, uh, there used to be, when this project was, or when this property was originally created, uh, the people who created it uh, did so with a drainage swale, well-meaning, right off of the road. So it was between the actual property and the roadway, which is essentially what you see here. And it used to be all the way down to the clam bank. There was an open swale. Well, it worked great at low tide in non-storm situations. When high tide came around and you had a storm that mixed with it, you can imagine what happened. Anybody who's familiar with the, the clam bank parking lot um, over the years, for those of us who have been here for quite a long time, <coughs> you'd actually see stormwater going the wrong way, percolating up through the stormwater system uh, in the parking lot of the clam bake and caused a lot of flooding. So what happened was the, the unintended consequence was that uh, this entire area is, was then designated by the DEP by default as a wetland area, even though it was just an open drainage channel. They admitted that. They said, yes, it doesn't make sense, but that's the way it is. So the town, um, at the, at the uh, behest of uh, actually quite a number of, of different people, both the town and Ready Seafood in this case, about a year and a half ago, submitted to the DEP a request to be able to fill in those drainage swales all the way up to the clam bake and then coming down in this direction. The DEP readily agreed uh, with the town's request. He sent the, uh, the DEP permit by rule back to the town. The town was able to provide that to us and all was great. Uh, we were then able to, uh, or the Ready Seafood was able then to occupy the area without any issues. Uh, what we didn't do, or what the town didn't do at the time and wasn't asked to do, was to extend that down in this direction, primarily because the DEP said, you don't waste your time. We understand, I'm not going to put words in their mouth, but essentially that was it. Um, you've got an open swale now, we've taken care of the middle section, that which is at the end, if you need to have something, come back to us. Permit in your packets. So the DEP has actually taken a look at this project and said, yes, this is benign, it's not a problem. This brackish swale right in here really shouldn't have been there to begin with, but it is, and let's just leave it there. But if you do need permission to do something, you've got it, and we do. Um, that comes back to the town. Uh, the town has been very, very supportive, not only with the, the zoning, but um, uh, with the, uh, the state's uh, um, the, um, commissioners for the economic state economic development and the uh, DEP uh, were actually here last summer 
uh, talking about this with members of the town staff. Um, and uh, we all agreed that this was the best way to be able to approach this, and it worked wonderfully. Uh, until such time as we got to the point where we said, okay, now let's add the loading docks. And we then discovered, actually to his credit, uh, the planner, Jay Chase, discovered that, uh, well, there's this provision within the town regulations that requires this 25-foot buffer strip to the extent that it can be done uh, if you are going to have a, any type of a structure, including a loading dock, that would be less than 75 feet away. The extent, the furthest extent of this loading dock to the uh, wetland area right down here is proposed at 55 feet. So we're pretty close, but we're not quite there. So because we're in the shoreland zone, we need the hardship variance. Is, that, is that a town rule or state yes. rule? That's a, a, a municipal regulation. Okay. Um, and it's within the purview of the board to be able to waive that to a certain extent. And that certain extent means Mr. Reddy is willing, not only willing, but you see from your photographs that were literally just taken a few days ago, he'll plant anything that he can. Um, he is not reticent at doing anything that he's asked to do toward that end and has actually had his landscaping completed to the extent that it's feasible. You'll see in the second photograph, it's actually in the back of the building, toward the back of the building. Um, he has, where there was nothing, it was just gravel and then it dropped off down to the marsh. He has revegetated that uh, to the extent that he can that's over in this area right here. He's actually expended, extended that considerably down this way. And of course, when we get over to this section, we're considerably further than 75 feet away from the building. But that area is naturally vegetated at the end of the parking lot anyway. The big issue we have then is why can't you just plant a bunch of extra native species in the area adjacent to this little swale? The reason is they've got uh, the biggest trucks that they have are T-50s, which are substantial uh, tractor trailers. And when these tractor trailers are backed up to the loading bays, they have a certain radius within which they cannot turn less than, as it were. Um, so if you've got a, an actual vehicle, a series of vehicles here, they have to come out beyond the parked vehicles and be able to, to park in a minimum radius, or a maximum radius, rather, to be able to negotiate them the way out and then back up to uh, this area and then onto the highways when they're um, either bringing product in or, or taking it back out again. So we're stymied as far as the 25-foot requirement. We've actually got down to planted about eight feet. That's about as far as we can go without the trucks running over everything. So again, the reason we're here and asking for the variance is we would like to add the, the dock is 15 feet wide. The loading dock's already there. We would like to expand it out in this direction by 16 feet. It will not be forward of the fenced area with the large nitrogen tank, which is right here. So we're not proposing really to come any closer with a structure to the road than a structure already exists. And there's no problem with the structure over in this section because this is not a wetland area down here. And we come back to this finger that nobody really thought about because it's just a drainage swale until it got to the point of technicality saying, well, it's still a wetland even though it's water going the other way. Um, and even though it's just drainage, it's not a classified wetland. Uh, we need to be able to address that. We need to be able to address that issue, and the only way to address that um, is to come to the zoning board. When we did go to the planning board a couple of months ago uh, for the approval of the, uh, the other portion of the dock, which they did approve, there was a structure there to begin with, um, they just said, we, and this is when Jay found this, and said you can't, act, the planning board cannot do that for the third bay, as it were, the third portion of the, of the structure, without going to the zoning board first. So if we are able to, uh, to get the variance granted this evening, then we will be going back to the planning board. They already know that. Um, and we've already got the plans created for this additional 16 feet of a concrete dock. In essence, Thank that's you. the story. Any letters on this? The rest not. I'll open the public hearing. Don't see anybody will close the public hearing. Anything to add on this? Um, no, I think Jim pretty much covered it all. Um, as I said in my staff comments, it's without the ability to put the 25-foot vegetated buffer in, they can't reduce the setback from 75 feet to something less. So they're caught in betwixt and between, and so they're coming back for a variance to the 75-foot setback. And this is kind of a classic example of something that only fits in the variance appeal. Because they're in shoreland and floodplain. And, but we've got the we got the state saying we don't care, uh, right? And the pool that is <coughs> causing the problem with the swales is actually a town rule. Uh -huh. I mean, so. the, 
the uh, the ordinance wasn't developed with this property in mind yes. specifically. <laughs> doesn't always everything doesn't always fit. Everything. And that's already impervious surface there anyway, right? That's correct. So we're just raising the impervious surface. No. Uh, there's no, your question is, is there an addition to the previous? No, we're just raising. Not increasing it. Oh, yes, it's just, we're just, just raising the, the impervious the surface. surface. That's correct. It's just raising it up to four feet, which is the level of, the, of a tractor-trailer bed. Mm -hmm. um, open up to questions. Mr. Fisher, you said that that's going to be on the side closest to the road? Yes. The addition? You, you can't go in the back corner? No, the back corner is actually a lot closer to, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's much closer to the resource, uh, to the marsh. Um, the DEP has asked that we don't go back there. Okay. And, uh, and actually, there is a, uh, an area with an external elevator that's right in this section. Actually, the elevator. Uh, and because uh, of the potential for erosion uh, with construction of that area, the, the, okay. uh, the essence was to bring it out closer to the road. Thank you. Are they looking to extend, when they extend the dock, are they looking to extend any of that fencing just to kind of cover things up back there? Yes. Right? Thank you. Um, that is part of the agreement is that or the the intent is that uh, rather than just having an open four foot area of concrete dock there there's a, a an enclosure fence right here around the nitrogen tank and they're just going to literally extend that six to, uh, 15 feet further to hide it from public view that's correct you've done a very good job and very detailed as always and we appreciate you taking the time for this because it makes our job a lot easier when we're looking at these and, and they can't load if you brought that thing out they can't load beside the building they still have to go to the the, the front point there in other words it, it doesn't come out far enough so that they could go beside the nitrogen tank and and well, load the only way conceivably that they could do without it would be to have a, a tractor trailer literally back up perpendicular to the road and the issue there is because these trucks are moving all the time because of the, the live nature of the commodity that tr a truck coming out from that way would actually block the other vehicles from being able to make that turning radii. Okay. Other questions from the board? In case the board's interested, that's a kind of a telling photo there that I have up on the screen. That's the drainage swale. You can see all of the impervious non-vegetated surface area that's in the parking lot now adjacent to that uh, trailer. So all of this area is already impervious, um, and that's the, the extent of the vegetation that we're, we're protecting. Not that it's not important to protect vegetation, but it's not much. <laughs> it's, it's probably not what you would consider significant uh, wetland. There's another view of it, and there's a view looking down the drainage ditch. Well, I, I like the fact of the, the two further photos that Mr. Fisher's provided, showing that they've added, I mean, I don't know if you call it vegetation, but yeah, they've added some plants and things in the back and the front, which, I mean, they're certainly trying to do everything they can by the looks of things. I'm actually, uh, one, of the, one of the real favorable things for me is covering those docks. I, I, I see yeah. outside docks as being a safety hazard, um, especially in inclement weather, so I, I like the fact that they want to actually do it right and bring it back where it needs to be. The... Um The town has actually been very supportive of this project, if I remember correctly, along with along with Sedco yep. and the chamber. Isn't that right? Yeah, Sedco is very supportive. Of the and they've project. been Sedco worked it, very hard with the applicants to bring them here, I believe. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, here's the problem. Number one, we're not going to meet straight up based on what we have, but based on the fact that my understanding is this is supposed to be a much bigger project, and it was intentionally designed that way. All of a sudden, cannot use a real, yield a reasonable return can make sense, because if in fact the town brought them here to grow, and I know the town they, they wanted them here, I know, and I know you had a lot to do with it. I don't know if directly, but I know the, the chair, uh, the uh, chamber, and the Sedco. I, I think it was more Sedco than the chamber, but yeah. Um, I, if the question of reasonable return comes up, to me the argument would be based on it is use today. You probably don't meet that based on what the town envisioned when they came, which is employees, which is good work um, for, for people in the, in the local area. Um, I do believe it meets that requirement or it doesn't meet the reasonable return that was expected. 
uh, when the first proposal said this is the site you should use. So, th so that's kind of to, to set the ground real quick. That's my position on number one. Um, and so, uh, why don't we go through these? But the, just so you know, that's how I'm, how I'm dealing with number one. Uh, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Reasonable return does not mean maximum return. Applicant must demonstrate practical loss of virtually all reasonable use of the land if the variance is not granted. Reasonable return is not determined by personal circumstances of the applicant. Do you want to just read in on that? Yes, reasonable return is thus defined not as maximum but as uh, reasonable pursuant to site constraints and everything that Ready Seafood has put into the site in the past year to effectively manage that operation. Variance to allow the construction of a 15 by 16 addition to the loading dock extension is the only part of the entire equation that needs to fall into place in order for the entire operation to continue smooth and operating, uh, continue operating smoothly and efficiently. Uh, having recently removed a 24 by 24 building on the site that was non-conforming in several ways, Mr. Reddy's intent is to follow all regulations as closely as possible and make this facility a model for Scarborough. Toward that end, the granting of the variance will greatly assist him in Ready Seafood to meet that goal. And the uh, next one is the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property. Um, if you want to read, go ahead and read that one in. The, the particular locus here is a very long and narrow property that was considered uh, or, or was created uh, long before zoning was enacted. And the portion of that property in question has wetland setbacks that overlap from both sides, most opposite sides of the lot. There is therefore no building envelope on this portion of the property. Uh, it is a very unique circumstance that is the reason why the variance is requested. And the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. The property is commercially zoned. It already supports two separate buildings used for the processing of lobster. It is surrounded on two sides by the marsh, on one side by Pine Point Road with vacant land across the street, unbuildable land, by the way. Um, and on the fourth side by the Clam Bake Restaurant, the owner of which actually sold the subject property to Ready Seafood. Slightly expanding the loading dock will in therefore no way alter the essential character of the neighborhood. And the hardship is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, in the interest of brevity, it is not the, the site and the buildings thereon were created before zoning was enacted toward that end. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, start with number one. Uh, we, we'll give her a break still. She's new, so we'll start down here again with you. Okay, Mr. Crockett. Uh, it's at the carrier. Uh, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. <coughs> this is always the toughest one to actually support and be able to say that it meets it uh, having toured the facility and seeing what they have there because when they came to town they invited any and all people that wanted to go in to kind of go in and tour the facility so they could see what they were doing uh, they harvest the lobsters in tanks and so they need to get them when they the market pertains to them getting them out of there I'm assuming they need to get them out of there pretty quickly and also, as Mr. Fisher has stated, when they're coming down from as far as Washington County or wherever it may be, the product could die if it's just sitting there. So it needs to be in the tanks fairly soon. So I, I normally would not say yes to this, but due to the fact that I've seen the facility and I know exactly what they're doing coming and going, I can probably say yes to this. Yeah, I think that this particular incident has got a lot of extenuating circumstances that don't really fit the the, the layout of, of uh, most of these most of the things that we see. And I agree with, because of the timing thing; it's a it's a pretty big deal. But also that the town is very much behind this project. It, they've made it real clear that they've done a lot to try to bring the business here, and it seems only normal that we'd want them to be able to expand and, and make that a, a viable business. Uh, for me, I, I like Mr. Fisher's explanation or the definition that uh, with a reasonable return is much different for a commercial application or a commercial uh, uh, lot compared to a residential lot. And uh, again, like Mr. Stark said, it's supported by the town, it's supported by the DEP. The DEP recognizes that the awkward zoning restrictions in that area uh, don't, really, um, don't really make sense for this particular lot. Um, so that's uh, my two cents that I'll add into it, but I feel like that this application uh, satisfies question one for me. I agree. I think the business that they're running, this is very uh, important for them. 
Again, I, I come back to what I originally said. I think that given the expectations, a reasonable return does require the ability to be able to move those products. And this is also a town rule, uh, which makes it a little bit easier to, to deal with, too. So I'm, I'm in favor of it. And we'll, we'll classify all of these as um, findings of facts and, and the law. Uh, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property. I would agree. I mean, Mr. Fish has done a really good job of explaining the turning radius of the trucks and how it's set up and looked at all the alternatives of backing the trucks in from the side or, or bringing them in. And, I mean, it doesn't make sense for people to be running out in the middle of the street to be pulling product off the truck. So I mean, you've done a very good job of showing us the details and providing us with all the information we need. Uh, yeah, I would, I would have to agree, as well as kind of giving us a little bit of background as to the swales and and um, the fact that DEP said go ahead and fill them in, but just that that section was just kind of overlooked. So uh, thank you for, for filling us in and kind of giving us the whole picture on that. Yeah, the background information was very helpful as far as uh, understanding uh, initially where they came from when they zoned it and then how uh, it has sort of evolved into what it is today and um, I agree that this satisfies number two obviously the lot predates again sort of tying into the other questions as well but predating zoning and they didn't have um, the unique circumstance of the property in that they didn't really have you know tractor trailers back when this lot was initially put together however long ago it was yeah horses and carriages 18 foot long ones, probably. <laughs> but big lobsters. <laughs> I agree with the board. Okay. Uh, just a question Is it just a transfer station, or do they process there, or what do they do there? They actually process there. They bring in the live product, they process that product, and then with the, uh, uh, with the finished product that goes out to anywhere f throughout the country, uh, the nitrogen is used to freeze it. Um, so then they can send it out to wherever they need to. Okay. So they Papers. continually got trucks coming and going with live product and... Their you know, own brand or different brands? Beg your pardon? Their own brand or different brands? Uh, that I don't know. I'm not sure. They, they have... Miss, I don't know which Mr. Ready it is, but one of the brothers bu built and designed the tank where they actually hibernate the lobsters. They kind of put them to sleep until they're ready to wake them up. And then when the market demands the sale of lobsters, they wake the lobsters up. <laughs> they bring them to the top of the service, and they ship them out for sale. Some celebrity's not going to like that. <laughs> yeah, you got that. <laughs> um, I, I, I support number two. I don't have any, any issues. I think it's pretty obvious it's property. The granting of the variance will not result in the, uh, will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. I can't imagine what it smells like. But. It's no. To be honest with you, you don't. Yeah, you wouldn't even know being there. Really? Yeah, they do. They do a really good job of keeping it smelling as good as can be. I mean, it smells a little bit differently inside of the building than it does <coughs> outside. But no, I I haven't noticed any detriment. I I certainly don't think that it changes the character. In fact, that uh, that neighborhood was has been in the seafood industry for many many years with Snow's Clam Chowder for how many years was that there? So I think it's a long history of this type of a of a business down there. I agree, and the fact that they're uh, adding in the barrier or extending the fence along the proposed uh, addition to the loading dock kind of helps cover it up for anybody sort of passing by that may have a problem with it. Uh, obviously, I don't. And uh, as far as the smell is concerned, it can't be any worse than low tide around there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I, I live down the street. I didn't know what that building was for. It does not smell at all. I've seen the improvements that they've made um, around the wetlands there. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy they're putting a fence up so you won't see as much from the road. Okay. And uh, I'm in the same position. I, I think it's it's what the neighbor, that's what it was rezoned for. So, uh, the hardship is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner of the property. No, it, it is what it is. The building is what it is. It wasn't designed to be what it is now, but the applicant's doing a really good job of making that conform to whatever they can for us. Yeah, I would have to agree. The, the shape of the property, it, it's 
just that's the design of it so you've got to try to make do with what you've got I agree with both comments I agree as well and I would also agree so I, I don't see any reason to, they certainly didn't do it all right so uh, we've got uh, these four items so do I have a motion move to approve as uh, as requested second any discussion on the motion seeing none all in favor that's unanimous Thank you for your time. Thank you for Thank you. the hard work Good on season. this, Jim. Thank you very much, Mr. Fisher. The pictures help out a lot. I Good. mean, when folks bring those in to us, it, it does help us kind of see it, see things a little clearer. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the meeting. Anything to add to me? Any board members have anything to say? Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Have a great night. At one point, I think it's the button. I think it is. One, I think it is. Maybe it's the one that I'm thinking of. Take care. Have a good night. Jim, do you remember what the original use of that building was? Uh, you, you know, I do know. I know it was. It was Thurlow used to have his lobster business out of Yeah, that. for years. I Mike bought Thurlow. a bunch of them. And when he became fire chief, he, he gave up. He gave it up. <laughs> yeah, Mike ran the lo that lobster business out of there. You as well. Yeah. Chief, 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 yeah. Really? I didn't know that's who it was. I, I, I bought that one. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure like a hundred Thurlows. <laughs> and then you if they're not named Thurlow, there's a relation to them. It's sort of like the, there's bears in the, in the plot. Is that, that chain goes on. And yeah. On. But I don't know. We were talking about the other You are good. You are absolutely good. Thank you. With this building here, they're bringing in fresh. Uh, they're bringing in soft shell because they process soft shell. Nobody wants to get soft shell. They don't want to buy soft shell. Yeah. They're small. You're keeping that, right? So the hard shell are over here. In this building. You're welcome. Have a good night. Soft shell get processed. Do they have both of them? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. that. That was the building where Mr. Bagel and the gift shop. Okay. Yeah. So they keep the high shells yeah. and they sell Not only that, they're working on process where they actually take the shell, the soft shells that they process and grind them up yeah. and, they, and they mix them back into the storage water in the hard shell storage so that they can actually calcium. harden soft shells up quicker. So they actually take... It's calcium. So yeah, it's calcium. So it just hardens them up quicker. And they create no hard shell out of soft shell. <laughs> it's no freaky. way. It's freaky. Something's wrong with that, though. We're all going to... Yeah. <laughs> going to be these monster lobsters crawling out of there. 